Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. How much faster is the third generation of Ryzen versus the first and second gen? Is it really that much better? Is it worth upgrading? Today we're going to answer those questions and more as we compare the Ryzen 7 1700X, 2700X, and the top of the line 3800X 8 core 16 thread CPUs from AMD. When AMD launched Ryzen 7 back in March of 2017, I said at the time it was the most important CPU launch in 10 years. It brought AMD back into the competitive fold, it kicked Intel off their perch and got them moving, and it enabled 8-core 16-thread CPUs to be available to consumers at a reasonable price for the first time. It brought content creation and multi-threaded performance to a whole new price point that previously was simply unavailable. It did not dethrone Intel in the gaming department, or frankly the super high performance department, but it came pretty close for the average consumer. Zen 2 closes that gap even further. It still has not dethroned Intel completely, but it's getting real close. The idea today is to look at how far Ryzen has come in the past two and a half years since it first launched back in March of 2017. Is it worth upgrading from a first or a second gen Ryzen CPU to third gen? All of our CPUs today were tested at stock settings, no changes in the BIOS to any performance options other than turning XMP on for our RAM were used. Our test bench is the ASUS ROG Strix X470-F motherboard. We're using a 470 board because it's the only platform that supports all three generations of chips. You cannot put a 1700X on an X570 board. We have 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200CL16 RAM. As I mentioned before, XMP was turned on in the BIOS. Our CPU is being cooled with this very nice Scythe Mugen 5 120 millimeter CPU cooler and MSI Afterburner was used to provide the game performance benchmarks and the real-time numbers you're about to see in just a minute. No performance was lost for recording these benchmarks because I used an external hardware capture card in a second computer. The test bench didn't even know it was being recorded. I will have more thoughts and a follow-up after the benchmarks, but for now, I just want to remind all of you that links to everything you see here on the desk will be down in the video description below to Amazon and Newegg. Those are affiliate links. They support the channel at no extra cost to you. I do get sent some product samples. The Ryzen 7 1700X was provided by AMD, but the 2700X and 3800X were not. I had to buy those. The video card was generously sampled by Gigabyte, appreciate that, and the cooler was provided by Scythe, the first one I've used. The motherboard and the rest of the components, including the RAM on here, I also had to buy. So your support with shopping using those links is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, on with the benchmarks. For our first benchmark, we have this generation's crisis, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, 1080p high detail, and there's actually several very interesting things you can pull from just watching this built-in benchmark. Take a look at the power consumption numbers, at how much more power the 2700X uses over the 1700X, but how much less power the 3800X uses, probably due to the fact that it's seven nanometer and a more efficient design. But I do think that that's an interesting detail that showed up that is harder to notice when you're not watching all three at the same time. Clock speed wise, the 3800X is faster, but notice the frame rate doesn't seem to be much improved, even though it's using more of the graphics card. I ran this and reran it and I went back and looked at it and I went, huh, that's interesting but that's how it turned out. I've got some more for you here, but I thought that that was interesting. Despite a higher clock speed and a higher GPU utilization, it didn't really make much of a difference. The 1700X is of course the slowest, but that should surprise nobody. 62 frames per second average on the 1700X, 72 on the 2700X, and yeah, 72 on the 3800X. That was weird. I'm not showing you the 0.1% low here because frankly, it's weird. This benchmark is one of those benchmarks that doesn't show that properly. You run it, you run it again, you run it a third time, you run it five times, and you get completely inconsistent 
unpredictable results, so I simply left it off because it's useless. It just it doesn't tell you anything. So I left that off here. I'll show it to you on some of the other benchmarks. But the 1% low is pretty reasonable. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 1080p high detail, all three runs on the same map in the same mode, so these should be fairly consistent and fairly easy to compare. This is the Nuketown map. Now, of course, the faster processors are, shockingly enough, faster, and by more than you might think, I played a full battle, multiple rounds here on each of these, uh, benchmarked the entire run. I'm not going to include the 0.1% lows because deaths and respawns ruin those. They were all over the place. So we're just going to have the 1% lows here. And frankly, it was smooth and playable across all three processors. Take a look at the frame rate in real time, the graphics card utilization in real time, and the CPU utilization in real time. Now you cannot compare frame by frame. I gotta leave these up here for a few seconds for you to watch because you cannot compare them because it's a live action game. This is not a benchmark where every frame is identical. You're I'm in different places. There's different shooting and blasting going on. And so it's an accumulative total. And that's true of all of the live gameplays. But if you watch the trends overall, you will find that the usage on the 3800X is higher because the CPU is faster, and so the graphics card is being utilized more, and the frame rate is higher. Although, as I'm saying this, the 2700X was actually faster in that moment, but now the 3800X is faster. Again, you have to sort of, you kind of would have to watch the whole battle to really sort of get a trend line, but this is what the charts are for. And speaking of charts, 103 frames per second average on the 1700X, 122 on the 2700X, and 150 on the 3800X. Now, the 1% low numbers were not dramatically different. Those were all grouped very, very tightly, but that 3800X is legit straight up monstrously faster than the first generation chip by nearly 50 frames per second. That's a result. Next up, we have Counter-Strike Global Offensive, which frankly, to be completely honest, does not need an 8-core 16-thread chip. But this also shows you the performance difference between first, second, and third generation Ryzen, whether you're looking at Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 5 or, well, frankly, Ryzen 3 when they eventually release a Ryzen 3 Zen 2 CPU. The usage is fairly low, but the frame rates are very high. This is 1080p high detail, and of course, if you want more, you can lower it, and if you want less, you can raise it. But there is a legit performance difference between these CPUs, as you can watch from the real-time numbers here. Now, each of these was benchmarked for about 10 minutes or so, which I'm not going to show you all of. And do keep in mind that every time the round starts and whatnot, that there's a little bit of a delay but I am going to include the 0.1% lows here because they were actually fairly consistent as I was testing. 204 frames per second average on the 1700X, 244 on the 2700X, and 283 on the 3800X. Now those are all interesting, but personally what I find much more interesting are the 1% and 0.1% lows. 117 to 191 on the 1% lows. Now these were all done on the same map, on the same configuration, the same everything, except for the CPUs. That is a monster difference in 1% lows. Take a look at the 0.1% lows, 39 to 58 to 97. Zen 2 is amazing. You absolutely don't have to have Zen 2 if you just want to play games, but it is faster. It is more responsive. It does have better latency. And if you're a competitive gamer and you're looking at AMD, Zen 2 is pretty awesome. Although to be blunt, a Ryzen 5 3600 is really all you need for a game like this. Moving on to a much more demanding game, the full price DLC for Far Cry 5, Far Cry New Dawn. Performance wise, this is much closer than some of the other benchmarks here. It's a heavily graphics card bound test. Although interestingly enough, if you look at the graphics card usage, you'll notice that the graphics cards are actually not pushed to their limit. Game engine, benchmark engine limit, sometimes games just don't take advantage of all available resources. Notice that all of the CPUs are right around 25% used. Eight cores, 16 threads is basically 25% four cores. So it's simply not using all the cores and threads. In the actual game, when you're running around and doing stuff, it'll use a little bit more. Some benchmarks are more CPU bound than others. This benchmark honestly is a better graphics card test than it is a CPU test 
because it's really not stressing the CPUs the way the, the actual game itself can. I include it because it's fairly quick to run and I, it, I use it in a lot of videos, so it's a nice comparison. I just wouldn't put as much weight in this one as I would in others for a CPU comparison. 83 frames per second on a 1700X, 94 on a 2700X, and 105 on a 3800X. To be sure, with more graphics card, you potentially could see more of a difference there, especially if you're at 1440p or high frame rates are really important to you, but it's fairly consistent across the board. Uh, the same thing on the 1% and 0.1% lows. This is a very steady, very dependable benchmark that doesn't vary all over the place like some others, Assassin's Creed Odyssey looking at you. Moving on to everybody's favorite battle royale game, Fortnite. Now, this is another game that's very difficult to benchmark because the battle is always going to be different. Where you land, who you face, how much combat you get into. I am not playing solo battles, I'm playing Team Rumble, and the reason for that is the response. It lets you get back in and, and have a decent length battle. With the pure battle royale, it's just over too quickly and there's nothing to benchmark. The downside, of course, is there's resource collecting and then the map closes in and sometimes you have a great team and you're just dominating and other times you're just getting slaughtered left and right. So it is challenging to benchmark. However, I did record the entire game and I did benchmark the entire game on all of them. So when you look at the charts, it is what it is for the battle. It's actually kind of interesting in how it turned out, but we'll look at that in a second. The frame rates are all crazy. If you look at the real-time performance numbers on the screen, you might very well come to the conclusion, holy smokes, these are all spectacular. What's the difference? What's the big deal? Well, there isn't much of one, at least in what you're watching, but it becomes bigger when you look at the total result. And similar to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, if you are a serious, serious competitive player, I think the end result will have meaning for some of you. But it won't if you're just a casual player and don't care. 166 frames per second on the 1700X, 165 on the 27. Wait, what? Again, live battle. If you'd swap the battles around and swap the chips around, I'm sure the results would have then been split. It's just how it worked out. However, what is not odd is the fact that the 3800X is at 207 average, which is fast and faster, and it's nice. But again, just like CSGO, by far, Far the most interesting result is the 1% and 0.1% lows. 87 and 82 on the basically Zen and Zen Plus versus 135 on the 3800X Zen 2. Way down in the 17 and 18 range on Zen and Zen Plus versus 59 on Zen 2. Again, these were full battles, Team Rumble, same map, tested back to back on the same system. If you're into competitive play, if frame rate delivery and frame pacing and lag and input responsiveness are important, Zen 2 is awesome. Ghost Recon Breakpoint, the brand new, critically acclaimed, awesome open world game that everyone loves. Okay, maybe not quite. I love it. I know there's a lot of people out there who weren't happy with this, but I certainly was. I am 35, almost 40 hours into this now, and frankly, I'm enjoying it. I do have enough time in the game now to be able to tell you a couple of things. Number one, eight cores rocks. It does run fine on six cores. It is smoother on eight. I should do a video about that, but well, take my word for it because I've played it on both and it definitely is smoother on eight cores. In fact, you can see, especially on the 2700X and 3800X, how it does jump up to 50% at times. It depends upon where you're at in the game and what you're doing, but it does use all eight cores. Remember, 50% is eight cores. Above that is hyper-threading, or SMT since it's not Intel. Who cares? In any case, the performance difference between these CPUs is not huge. It's there, and it's real, but the more interesting ones are the 1% and 0.1% lows rather than just the averages. 1080p high detail, 77, 87, 94 between the three chips. That's not a huge difference, and frankly, 77 is very playable on a 1700X. However, the 1% and 0.1% lows are where it gets interesting. The 2700X is fine. It has improved latency and improved responsiveness. The higher clock speed helps, and I would certainly take it over a 1700X. However, notice that even the 3800X didn't maintain 60 frames per second at 1080p high detail, but it was really, really close on its 0.1% low number. 
Having played this game on a variety of machines, it's a good example of how you can look at benchmarks of games that are one to three years old and say, ah, who needs all this new stuff? Just buy something basic. But if you want to play new games like Ghost Recon Breakpoint over the next three years, you're going to find the first generation chips, and especially chips with fewer cores, really aren't going to age very well going forward. If you don't care about these sorts of games, well, then that doesn't matter. Now we have Overwatch, and the screen might look a little bit different here, and that's because, for whatever reason, my recording on the 2700X was corrupted, and going and setting the test bench up again to re-record it and re-benchmark it would be, frankly, a lot of work. So forgive me, but I'm just not including it. I do have the number because it was actually benchmarked on the test bench, and I, I keep all of the benchmarks in a file separate from the recording. So while I don't have the recording, the benchmark chart will have the number from the 2700X. Notice the dramatic performance difference between the 1700X and the 3800X. This is not just a minor improvement. Oh, look, we're 10% faster. Oh, we're 20% faster. It's nice. Holy smokes, that's a huge difference. And it really is. Now, of course, the numbers are so big that you may be going, who cares? Who needs 250 to 300 frames per second? What difference does it make? Fair enough. It may mean nothing to you. You may look at these numbers and go, great, first-gen Ryzen deal. And there's nothing wrong with that. But again, just like Fortnite and uh, CSGO, if you are a hyper-competitive player and you want the fastest response times and the best performance, and frankly, you don't want to give your money to Intel, because let's face it, they win that battle generally, then Zen 2 is a really, really good option. 186 frames per second on the 1700X, 264 on the 3800X. That is a huge performance improvement for just two generations and just two years apart. Look at the 1% lows, 118 to 166. Now again, 118 is spectacular and amazing, and if you are not a super hyper competitive, ultimate professional, elite, competitive, whatever player, then you're like, oh, who cares? 118 is spectacular. I agree with you. I would have no problem whatsoever playing this on a first gen Ryzen. I'm not a hyper competitive player. But if you are, 166, 99% of the time is phenomenal. And again, well, the 0.1% lows are pretty low. But hey, 32 beats the heck out of 9 and 11. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now, just like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, this is another in the next generation of games that will absolutely use an 8-core processor. Not all the time. It's not required. It will absolutely play unless, but it will use it. And this game is a year old. So I won't rehash that argument, but it's there. I'm just going to show you the first segment of this benchmark because this video is plenty long as it is now, but I want you to see the real-time numbers on the screen in these recordings. If you were just looking at benchmark charts, that's what websites are for. Go look. You don't need to come to YouTube just to see a benchmark chart. But this real-time information on the performance here is what I think is truly valuable. Notice this is one of the few games that truly utilizes all of the graphics card. 112, 120, and 130 on the average. Interestingly enough, the 1% 0.1% low numbers are a bit off, but again, these are built-in benchmarks and they can be kind of squirrely, which is why I didn't include the 0.1% low in some of them. It, regardless, it performs very well across all of these. More graphics card would actually split them and cause the 3800X to run better. You saw it was running kind of maxed out there because it's a very demanding game. But I wanted to put a mid-range graphics card in there so that we're not always using 2080 Ti's. Next up, we have a sports game, Steep, the skiing, snowboarding, paragliding simulator slash sports game. I am genuinely curious. I want y'all's comments down in the video description below. Keep it or ditch it? Do you want to continue to see this game benchmarked? I have not gotten a lot of feedback on it. I, it's different than the usual you know, first-person shooters and other things that I benchmark, and so I thought, well, maybe people are interested in this, but... I haven't really had any comments about it, so keep or ditch, I will look for your comments down below. As far as performance, well, here's a big shocker, the 3800X is faster. How much? Let's look at the benchmark. 78, 90, and 102 on the averages, and then frankly, the 1% and 0.1% lows are all kind of compressed together. So this doesn't have the same dramatic performance increase as others, but every game's going to be different depending upon resolution, detail setting, graphics card, etc. 
The Division 2, another open world game I've been having a lot of fun with recently and very well optimized. I have been impressed by the wide range of computers this will run on. Okay, the very, very bottom end, it kind of falls apart. But the performance here was good across the board. Obviously, it's going to be faster on a 3800X, but not tremendously so. However, I want you to watch something right now. I want you to look at the graphics card utilization between the 2700X in the middle and the 3800X on the bottom. Now, the 1700X on the top is using about 80%, there's 77%, 73% uh, graphics card usage. Notice that the two bottom tests have nearly 100% usage on the graphics card. When you look at the chart in the next screen, I want you to keep that in mind because if we had a faster graphics card or we were running at, well, lower resolution, lower, you can't really do lower. This is 1080p high detail. Who's going to do less? So if you had a 2080 Super or a 2080 Ti, there'd be a more pronounced difference here. But I'm trying to use reasonable mid-range graphics cards because how many people are buying $150 to $250 CPUs and putting $1,200 video cards on there? I hope you're not, but well, a few of you might be. 129, 149, and 152. Again, we were graphics card bound between the 2700X and 3800X, but we were not graphics card bound on the 1700X. So in this game, at this resolution, in this detail, you now know where the CPU becomes the bottleneck and where the GPU becomes the bottleneck because boom, there it is right there. Of course, 149 and 152 and even 129 are great frame rates. And if you want to play this game, frankly, a 1700X is just fine. You don't need any of the newer chips if you already have a first-gen Ryzen 7. And one of the 6-core 12-thread chips would actually be fine as well. This game is pretty well optimized. I've played it quite a bit. I'm going to finish it just like I finished Division 1. And uh, it's really nice. It's a lot of fun. In an effort to keep this short, Total War Three Kingdoms, I'm not gonna, the built-in benchmark doesn't show much, and especially when it's split three screens, 91, 99, and 102, a little bit more on the 1% and 0.1% low. Faster CPUs in games like this will help, but the built-in benchmark often doesn't really demonstrate it very well. I'm including it because people ask, but you really got to play the game in order to, you know, do a CPU test. A graphics card would be fine, but I'm not going to do that, so this is what you get. The performance increase from 1st to 3rd gen is very much real. Check out that Cinebench score, 47% faster between these two CPUs. The question is, will that translate into games? Well, good for you. We've got a bunch of game benchmarks to show you. As I mentioned, it's quite long, but a detailed analysis of the real-time numbers is included. So if you're genuinely interested in the question, how much better is Zen 2? Well, you've come to the right video. Enough talking, on with the benchmarks. Looking at our first non-game benchmark, we have seven zips built in benchmark, compression, decompression, and the combined total. For those of you playing the home game, the combined total is 35% faster on the 3800X versus the 1700X. Is it worth it? From a pure performance to dollar point of view, no, unless time is money. Same thing with Blender, the 3D render benchmark. It's about six minutes faster on the 3800X versus the 1700X, or roughly about 30%. Is saving 30% on your 3D render time important to you? Well, frankly, if Blender's important to you, you're watching the wrong video. You should be watching the Ryzen 9 3900X versus 3950X. But those are at a completely different price class, so if this is where you're at, yeah, the 3800X is faster. Everybody's favorite benchmark, Cinebench R20. 44% faster between the 1700X and the 3800X in single core, and 47% faster in multi-core. Now, this is a pure render benchmark that takes nothing else into account, and it does not take nearly as long to render as the Blender benchmark does, which is why the Blender benchmark doesn't show the same level of improvement. This is sort of the best case scenario. In theory, if all the stars align, the 3800X is 50% faster, roughly, than a 1700X. Doing some video encoding work, Handbrake HVEC H265, 4K, 60 frames per second. 
This is a 150 megabit per second original raw source file that is being recompressed into a much tighter H.265 HVEC file. Two hours and four minutes on a 1700X, one hour and 15 minutes on the 3800X. That is a huge improvement. And if your time has value and you're legit doing this sort of thing, then yeah, I would absolutely upgrade from a 1700X to a 3800X. Although again, just like the Blender comments, why are you not buying a Ryzen 9? The additional cost of a Ryzen 9 3900X is completely worth it for this sort of workload. Finally, we have a general system benchmark, PC Mark 10. Now this does a variety of tests from basic office applications to content creation to graphics performance, storage performance, etc. Because of that, it tests a lot more than just the CPU and there is, quote, only a 28% improvement between the 1700X and the 3800X. But again, remember, this is testing real world applications and actually using Windows level programs besides direct, you know, encoding or 3D animating or whatever. And it just demonstrates that the newer CPUs are definitely an improvement. Kudos to AMD for such a large improvement in just two years. Thank you all for watching all of those benchmarks. For those of you who did not fast forward, two gold stars for you. It's greatly appreciated. These type of videos are a lot of work to put together. The short version is you don't need Zen 2 any more than you need eight cores to play games. The reality is you can play all current games on a first generation Ryzen on a four or six core chip and they play just fine. But if you want that premium experience, if you want a faster machine, a more responsive machine, everything from game updates to Windows applications to multitasking to game launch to those 1% and 0.1% low numbers, if you want the Cadillac experience, you've come to the right place because Zen 2 is amazing. It's like 90 to 95% of Intel's best for a lot less money. Two gold stars to AMD for putting out an awesome product. Like this video if you like it, share it with a friend if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with a big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, you know where the comment section is. I don't have a chance to respond to everybody, but I do scroll through them and I do read them and I appreciate you taking the time to leave one. Be sure to hit that bell notification icon to be notified when the next video comes out. Check the links in the video description below as I mentioned before and consider supporting this channel on Patreon or Floatplane if you are able to, to either get early access to the charts or on Patreon, early access to the entire video. Thanks so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.